Hi, this is the first video for um, the first part of the TSA course, the Sun's Atmosphere course, where we're going to start with an overview of the solar atmosphere. So, to start with, we're just going to uh, summarize the motivation for these first few videos and lectures. Why do we study the Sun and why is the Sun an interesting object for astrophysics and physics in general and indeed even for a wider range of uh, scientific investigation? This is an ideal laboratory to study complex physical processes involving plasma and magnetic fields. So in particular it's an excellent place to consider a range of um, uh, phenomena which are not reproducible on Earth and which are not accessible to ex scientific experimentation other than in the Sun itself. We want, uh, in order to uh, study other stars, be able to understand the structure and dynamics of the solar atmosphere. And what's really fascinating in solar physics is how many disciplines and areas of expertise come together. So we will see uh, throughout the entire course uh, in the various subjects that you will be uh, learning about how these different disciplines and areas of expertise can uh, help understand how the sun works. So in the two days, well, in, 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 in this video and uh, the few videos that will um, follow on uh, this introduction to the course, you will become more familiar with the range of observations that are available to obtain a global picture of the solar atmosphere, and in particular we'll focus on the structure and the dynamics of the solar atmosphere, and this will provide you an observational context for the remaining lectures. And we will, of course, by doing so, present some of the key features of the solar atmosphere. Okay, so perhaps one of the key things that I want to highlight to start with is that in order to be able to study the solar atmosphere, we need, what I say, multiple eyes. And why do we need multiple eyes? We need to obtain a broad view of the solar atmosphere and uh, different viewpoints, not necessarily only geographical viewpoints, if you like. Uh, it's not only a question of where the observer is based, but also with what sort of eyes you're looking at the sun. You know uh, probably already that uh, you can, if you observe an object, um, put a filter of a different color um, in front of your instrument or in front of your eyes. So essentially by uh, filtering out certain wavelengths and letting only some wavelengths uh, penetrating your uh, detector, then you are able to select a specific view of the object that you are studying. In the sun it's very important because in the study of the solar atmosphere by looking at different uh, wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, we can probe different parts of the solar atmosphere. Here you see a very good example where on the top left you have a view of the solar surface, the photosphere, in the visible part of the spectrum at 450 nanometers or 4500 angstroms, one angstrom being the tenth of a nanometer. The view uh, on the top right and bottom left are two different views of the solar corona corresponding to different temperatures of the plasma in the solar corona uh, above 1 million degrees. And this view here is a view of an intermediate height in the solar atmosphere. So here you have the photosphere, the lowest part of the solar atmosphere. Here you have the corona, which is the highest part of the the solar atmosphere and somewhere in between you have what we call the chromosphere uh, and you see and all these uh, images have been taken simultaneously or nearly simultaneously um, by the same uh, telescope but at different wavelengths 
and you see that uh, the appearance of the solar atmosphere is extremely different depending on the wavelengths at which you are observing it. So I'm going to uh, illustrate this with a movie where uh, we start with one of the views at 171 angstroms obtained by the uh, Solar Dynamics Observatory satellite uh, and its AIA telescope. And then we are going to compare this uh, view uh, with the three other views. So photosphere on the top left, corona on the top right and bottom left, and chromosphere on the bottom right. So these observations are simultaneous and cover about three years of observations of the Sun. So it's a really condensed view of the Sun in just a few seconds, over three years. You see that there are various features at different levels of the solar atmosphere which can be seen. For instance, you see many sunspots here on the surface. And you see that these sunspots correspond to the bright regions that we see in the corona and in the chromosphere. So these bright regions are connected to what's going on lower, lower down in the atmosphere at the level of the surface, at the level of the photosphere. These sunspots are regions where the magnetic field is very strong and indeed we will see during these lectures that the magnetic field is what shapes the solar atmosphere and what uh, can be used to explain the different appearance between the different uh, heights at which you are observing the solar atmosphere. So one crucial point that I've already hinted at very briefly is that the temperature of the, of the atmosphere changes with height in the solar atmosphere. And this is summarized by this simplistic uh, uh, view of uh, the temperature and the density of the plasma in the solar atmosphere as a function of height. So here you have the solar surface, uh, the bottom of the photosphere, and as we are going up, we are going up in the atmosphere at a range uh, here up to about 3000 kilometers. We sometimes uh, talk about megameters, uh, so one megameter is 1000 kilometers. So you're going from zero to three megameters here. The photosphere is uh, roughly this range of uh, altitude in the solar atmosphere where the temperature uh, decreases um, from a value of about 6000 degrees in uh, at the bottom of the photosphere to uh, a minimum value of about uh, uh, 5000 600 degrees and then the temperature starts to rise again um, from that minimum value to uh, values closer to 10,000 degrees in the chromosphere and then there is a very sharp rise in a very narrow region which is called the transition region where the temperature increases very sharply and then reaches values of about 1 million degrees in the corona. Look, uh, uh, note here that the scale is logarithmic in temperature. If we look at the evolution of the density, you start with a very dense plasma at the level of the photosphere and the density continuously decreases throughout the chromosphere with a further very sharp decrease in density in the transition region and to reach the lowest densities in the corona. So in terms of density there is nothing too surprising as you uh, go further away from the surface of the star the density of the plasma decreases. This is quite expected. However the behavior of the temperature is uh, puzzling. Uh, it starts to decrease as expected as you go away from the sun but then it increases again and in particular reaches values of the order of 1 million degrees in the corona while you have uh, temperatures of around 6000 degrees at the level of the photosphere. This behavior of the temperature is not fully understood is, and is one of the major puzzles in solar physics. How do we explain the heating of the solar atmosphere in the chromosphere and in the corona? 
So this will be of course covered in some of the other lectures. So that's it, that's it for this first video. Um, in the next video we will uh, start talking about the different layers of the solar atmosphere in more detail, presenting some of their key uh, observational aspects and uh, key properties. So thanks for watching this and see you in the next video.